Are you a beginner or an intermediate guitar player looking to improve your skills? Well, in this video today, I'm going to discuss 10 common guitar mistakes and how to avoid them. I will be pointing out common mistakes to make you aware of them, and I'm going to offer practical solutions and exercises to help you avoid them. Now, the first and the second mistake I'm going to point out is really overlooked, but wait until you get to that eighth mistake. I have a solution for you, and this one that is guaranteed to change your playing forever. Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jeff Davis. I'm a 35-year veteran guitar instructor holding a degree in classical guitar. Also teacher education, teaching over 60 students a week, running my 120 student music school here in Plymouth, Michigan. And I'm excited to set aside time today to teach you. So let's grab our guitars and let's get going. Mistake number one, improper hand and wrist placement. A lot of times I see students come into the lesson and their wrist is contorted either this way or this way. Also, the thumb is in a weird spot when they play. Sometimes I see it over here, sometimes I see it lower. Remember that if you make a fist with your hand, this is how your hand naturally wants to be. We want to relate to this when we're playing. So keep your wrist straight with your thumb generally behind wherever the first and the second finger are. It looks like this when we put our hand up to the neck. It should be very comfortable. It should feel like you have leverage if you pull. Mistake number two, neglecting to tune your guitar regularly. Now, in the very beginning stages, it's really important that you use a guitar tuner just like this one right here. This will help you tune the guitar in a stage where you're just not sure of what the pitches are. But eventually, I would like for you to practice and learn to tune your guitar by ear. Now, this does take some time, and I do have a video on this that I think it's worth checking out. I have a video called Guitar Tuning 101. Check out that video to learn more. Mistake number three, not practicing regularly or consistently. I recommend that you just take five minutes of your day just five minutes to sit down with your instrument and go over the things that you're interested in learning as well as some warm up things. Now, along with this, what I recommend that you do is you keep a journal, right? It's really important that you write down how much time you're spending each day. I did this early on, it had a huge effect on my confidence in my learning. Also, write down your frustrations Maybe some things that you're happy about that you've gotten good at. Maybe some ideas you have, questions that you need to ask people like me, which I recommend. Ask a question down in the comments. I'm more than glad to help you. So just ask a question, anything about what you're having uh, struggles with or things that you're excited about, and I'd be more than glad to respond. I do recommend that you check out my video, Master the Best Practice Techniques. Mistake number four using way too much pressure when you're pressing down on the strings. All right, so there are a few things that beginning students do and some intermediate students, and to be honest, I'm so guilty of this from time to time. We stress out when we play and we press down on that fret way harder than we need to. Yes, over time, calluses will kind of hide a little bit of this. As your calluses get stronger, you won't notice that you're pressing as hard, but just know this, if you press down on a note like this note, it only requires so much pressure to sound. Any more than that and any less than that is not good. So if I bring my finger up and barely touch the fret and I play, it's no sound. Here it's kind of buzzing. Once I figure out where that sweet spot is, that's the amount of pressure that I need. Right. Mistake number five, neglecting proper posture. Now let me ask you a question. When you practice at home, where are you practicing? Commonly, it's very common to do this, and I did this early on, and that is to practice in my bedroom. I would sit on my bed, but over time I'd notice my back would get sore because I'm slouching on this mattress that's giving in to my weight. What I recommend that you do is you get a chair, solid chair, like this one here, and sit up straight. Now, it's kind of hard to see this from where I'm sitting right now, but the other thing that I like to do to help promote a good posture is to lean my guitar this way and tilt this leg down. I'll move this leg slightly back a little bit to prop this leg up. Sometimes I'm even, even on my tip, tippy toes on this, on this foot. You know, you could get one of those classical guitar stools to prop this leg up, but the idea is to keep this leg higher, keep the guitar closer to you at a bit of an angle so you're not doing 
this. Mistake number six, skipping warm-up exercises. Now, when I was studying classical guitar at Eastern Michigan University, what I learned was this. The first five to 10 minutes of the piece that I was working on, whether it was or whatever it was that I was working on, that's a Bach piece right there, I would literally make a thousand mistakes and I would get really discouraged. And what my teacher told me was, listen, you need to warm up properly so you can limit those mistakes. You need to work those kink kinks out and make sure that your brain and your fingers are synced together. So remember to devote the first part of your playing session, your practice session to warming up. Now, I've learned that over the years, my technique had increased faster through warm-ups than it did through the music that I was learning. Mistake number seven, not using a metronome. Now, guitarists are constantly criticized for having bad rhythm, and I'd like to share a story with you. When I was at Eastern Michigan University, a very good friend of mine had a conducting class. She asked me to play as a part of an ensemble for her final exam, a piece that she wrote that had guitar as well as other classical instruments in. Now, when she got up to conduct and I was sitting there, the instructor to her class, the professor, looked over, pointed at me and said, we have a guitar player, pointed at my friend and said, you better make it very obvious when you're conducting, when you're keeping that beat, make sure he knows where that beat is at. Now, at the time, I didn't know whether to be insulted or to be complimented, but he had a really good point. Guitar players are notoriously bad at finding the beat and keeping the rhythm. So incorporate a metronome into your daily practice to help you learn to be a much better rhythm player and keeping the beat. Mistake number eight, you're playing way too fast. Now, a lot of students come into the lesson room and they're excited about something that I've been teaching them. It could be like, you know, like, Now, you and I both know that song does not go that fast, but it always is, it's a moment for students to show their teacher how much they've been learning by, play something, by playing something too fast. Remember, slow practice equals fast learning. Speed kills. A very good teacher told me that once. You need to spend time practicing the things that you're learning slowly so that your brain and your fingers can work out the kinks. If you start making mistakes when you're playing, 90% of the time, probably 99% of the time, it's your brain and your fingers telling you you're going too fast. So make sure you curb yourself with this mistake, by the way. Going back to mistake number seven, practice with a metronome. Mistake number nine, you're neglecting to learn to read music and not learning music theory. Now, playing by ear and reading tablature has its benefits, and I know that as guitar players, we all start off by reading tablature and learning to play by ear but it should never be a replacement. In my experience, I learned that learning music theory and especially learning to read music opened up a whole new world in regards to studying the higher echelons of music, namely jazz and classical guitar. I never would have been able to study classical guitar. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even get through my audition at Eastern Michigan University on the classical guitar without having to learn to read because they tested me on that. So one of my teachers told me something when I was first learning guitar. He used to fight with me about learning to read music. I never wanted to do it. And he said, listen, you can't function very well in a country where you don't know the language, right? You need to learn to read music in order to function and communicate with other musicians. And finally, mistake number 10, unfairly comparing yourself to other guitar players. Remember, everybody progresses at their own pace. Growth is never a smooth line up. It always has dips and valleys. It's important to keep things into perspective for where you are and where you are at. If you're a beginner, remember it's unfair to compare yourself to someone who has been playing for years. It's important to know, watch other players for inspiration, but at the same time, keep your growth and your level in perspective. So in conclusion, I'd like to encourage you to consider the top 10 mistakes presented in this video and watch out for them. Take notes on this video, rewatch this video, and try to avoid them with the solutions that I've presented. There is a quote that I often share with my students, and that is, practice doesn't make perfect. I know you've heard this several times, but practice makes permanent. Essentially, perfect practice makes perfect. So thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day.